Joining us is former Arkansas governor and former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. Governor, your latest take on this poll, and what do you think it's going to take for Donald Trump to make up this gap? Although it's closing, there's still a gap there. Well, I think a lot will happen during the convention that will bring his uh, numbers up. But I think we're going to see polls that keep going back and forth like a tennis match, in part because these are not normal times. These aren't normal candidates. Uh, the electorate is not in a normal mood. So there's going to be nothing normal about it. Anybody who thinks we're going to see this steady sort of uh, fixation where the polls get stuck and they're going to be there till November, you're kidding yourself. They're not. They're going to bounce all over the place every time some candidate uh, either says something that people perceive to be outrageous or the other candidate gets closer to an indictment. You're just going to see the numbers switch. It doesn't mean a whole lot. How much does the mainstream media really matter in all of this, Governor? Because, again, I find being out there and, and just talking to people who I know and people I don't know, they are more connected with both of these candidates, what they're saying and doing, and they're not getting their news from places like the New York Times. They are really watching Twitter, and they're paying more close, close attention to the, what the individual candidates are up to. Papers like the New York Times and the Washington Post are being far more useful to put under a puppy than they are for which people get their news and make decisions about who they're going to vote for for president. So I think we, we are, are indeed in a time where people are making up their own minds. And let me tell you what I hear all over the place. I mean, whether it's at church or whether it's on the street or on airplanes when I'm traveling, people will kind of look around and make sure nobody's uh, listening and they'll say, I just want you to know I'm voting for Trump. And Here's the thing. I don't think the polls reflect an accurate assessment because, as it was in the Brexit vote, people will tell a pollster one thing because mm -hmm. they don't want to be called a racist, a, a, a Islamophobe, or a xenophobe. But deep down in their hearts, they know what they're going to do, and they're not going to vote for Hillary. But Governor, still, he, I, I, I know we're disputing the, the issue of the polls here, but still, he is, it, he is trailing her by about five points. When you've got somebody as unlikable as Hillary Clinton, who's in the middle of an FBI investigation, why is he not gaining in the polls? I mean, you can quietly tell a pollster, yeah, I'm going for Donald Trump. Uh, why isn't that happening? Why aren't we seeing that? It doesn't make sense. They're not talking to pollsters that way because they don't know who those pollsters are. And they don't want to come out and then have themselves identify. And, and there's just a great sense of, of uh, angst among the voters. The other thing, let's keep in mind, while we talk about the foibles of Hillary Clinton regularly, let's face it, you're not going to see that on the other networks. They're not going to be every day talking about uh, what kind of uh, challenges that she faces in terms of just basic credibility. And they're not going into the details of whether it's her foreign policy disaster or whether it's uh, the problems with her emails and the fact that she perjured herself with a statement that she signed that said she had turned over all the information and emails when, in fact, she had not. Uh, that's not something that most Americans are hearing day in and day out. And, and Governor, I just find it astonishing that we have a presidential candidate, the presumptive nominee of a major party, who is under criminal investigation, and then her husband, the ex-president, gets on an airplane and a, in a pri has a private meeting with the attorney general who's overseeing that investigation and an investigation potentially involving him into a foundation that's under investigation for corruption. You can't even make this stuff up. No, you really can't. And that's why I said uh, last week that I thought the biggest fireworks show over the 4th of July weekend was going to be when Bill and Hillary got together and she lit him up for making that <laughs> meeting with uh, Loretta Lynch because uh, I have a feeling she was livid when she found out uh, that he did that. And I'm guessing she did not know in advance because the appearance of it was so totally horrible. I mean, even Loretta Lynch had to come out and start... Uh, backpedaling all over the place after the meeting and trying to make a joke of it and that didn't go over real well and finally just saying she wouldn't do it again well she shouldn't have done it in the first right. place well and governor it, but sim that she has always gotten sympathy from people who felt like that her husband did her wrong so it'll be interesting to see how the campaign even quietly tries to spin that in her favor that her husband somehow wronged her again but i want to get to the vice presidential pick because it's going to be critical for clinton on the Democratic side in terms of finding somebody who's more trustworthy. And then on the GOP side, Donald Trump meeting that with... That would be anybody. Okay. <laughs> to Mother <laughs> Teresa, she's um, unfortunately not with us anymore. 
The Donald Trump meeting with Indiana Governor Mike Pence, also Iowa Senator Joni Ernst. Who would you who would you pick? Would either of these uh, professionals make a good running mate for Trump? Well, let me ask you something. Has Donald Trump done anything that we thought he would do? Has he done anything that was predicted for him to do? The answer, no. So I think for any of us to speculate as to who he might pick, uh, you know, we might as well be picking the he, Super Bowl winner need? in the year 2053. What, what does he need to strengthen his candidacy? Well, he himself has said he needs somebody with governing experience who has had some successful uh, time having... Uh, run the operations of government, somebody who understands the players and how to, uh, to deal with that, uh, someone who balances the ticket in that regard. I think that that probably is helpful. Somebody who can communicate, uh, who can be a good debater, uh, because whoever the vice presidential pick for Hillary is, that Republican vice presidential person is yeah. going to have to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and to take on Hillary in that debate and, and do it effectively. And Governor, do you think that he needs to pick a traditional conservative uh, running mate, or does he need to pick an independent that knows Washington? You know, what, in terms of a, a political spectrum quality, like what do you think he needs? Does he need to bolster his conservative credentials? Well, that probably doesn't hurt. I, I don't know that it needs to be a D.C. insider. That may not be his best pick, but somebody who at least the D.C. let's say overall people would tolerate. I don't say that would love, embrace, and have a cocktail party for. I'm just saying that they would at least say, whoo, this person is, you know, at least a, a mainstream kind of person, and, uh, you know, they don't hate us. Sarah Palin's and, free. Well, and. Oh, God. <laughs> well, Joni Ernst, I will say this before we go, Governor Huckabee. Joni Ernst had the best campaign ad maybe ever when she was running for Senate, where it was something to the effect of, I grew up on a hog farm, and I know how to. <laughs> Yeah. Castrate, castrate yeah. pigs <laughs> and cut, the, cut, yeah. cut waste. <laughs> what exactly was the... Uh, By the way, <laughs> one thing I got to leave you with yes, is sir. it wasn't in an irony that Barack Obama, the man who said that if you like your doctor and you like your health insurance, you can keep it. He's the one who's out this weekend vouching for Hillary Clinton's credibility and integrity. What an interesting picture that was. Very interesting. And I'll leave it at that because you have a way with words. And I, I might pick another word that wasn't so kind, Governor. Governor Huckabee, it was good to see you. Thank you so much, as always. Thanks a bunch.